Hello and welcome to our Monday Reflection. Yesterday was the feast of St Peter and St Paul, so today I'm particularly thinking about St Peter. And the reading is from Mark's Gospel, chapter 8, beginning to read at the 27th verse. Jesus and his disciples went on to the villages around Caesarea Philippi. On the way, he asked them, who do people say I am? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? Peter answered, you are the Messiah. Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about him. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan. He said, you do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross and follow me. And as always, we thank God for his word. Have you ever opened your mouth and put your foot in it? Figuratively speaking, of course. I have, frequently, too often. So it is a consolation to me at those times to know that St Peter did exactly the same on many occasions. We heard one of them in this morning's reading. Poor Peter. Only a few minutes earlier, he had been the star pupil, the one who could answer Jesus's question with those words, you are the Messiah. Gold star, go to the top of the class. But when Jesus tries to explain what that means, when he talks of suffering and of death, Peter kindly takes him on one side to explain to him that he Jesus has got it wrong. And for his pains, he not surprisingly receives that terrible answer. Get behind me, Satan. Back to the bottom of the class. Poor Peter. Poor us. We often get it wrong, don't we? Sometimes it's because we listen to well-meaning friends rather than listening to God. It's much more pleasant to be told that everything's all right, that the future is rosy, that there are no troubles ahead. But that's not what God promises. Sometimes it's because we don't listen to God himself and we're not prepared to change. It's much more comfortable to stay with our own preconceptions and prejudices. And to listen to what God might have to say. Because God tells us the truth. To follow Jesus means taking up our cross. It won't be easy. We will need to deny our own selfish way of life and instead follow in the way of our Lord. But notice, the word is follow. He doesn't say go. He doesn't say, on your bike. He doesn't even say, oh, just get on with it. He says, follow, follow me. The way may be difficult, but he has gone before us to prepare that way. He has walked ahead. He has already done the really hard work. We follow in his footsteps, in the path he has created. And at the end of that road, he will be there waiting for us. He doesn't promise an easy life, but he does promise that in this life, he will be with us. 
and that in the life to come, we will be with him. We all have things we regret, but they don't have to be an obstacle between us and God. Remember that before the crucifixion, Peter denied three times that he even knew Jesus. But after the resurrection, when Jesus faced an ashamed and repentant Peter, he did not ask, well, are you sorry? He asked, do you love me? And he asked it three times to cancel out those three denials. What was in the past was just that, the past, gone. What would enable Peter to achieve all Jesus asked him to do was to love him and follow him. There is a modern hymn which goes like this. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you? In me. Our calling is to follow Jesus, no matter how difficult the way may be. Our calling is to make his name known, not our name, not watering down his message, but proclaiming it. Not ashamed of our calling, but proud to follow in his footsteps. Like St. Peter, willing to take up our cross and to follow him. So let us pray. Father, may we walk with love in our hearts, light in our eyes, and life in our souls, as we follow the footsteps of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. And so may God bless us until we meet again.